class Opioidea in the phylum Echinodermata. You may recognize these things, you probably will if you've been diving at Pilot Bay. You've seen them underneath rocks and, under, and hiding in little crevices. These are the brittle stars and also the basket stars. Here's a brittle star with um, big long spines on the lateral part of the arms. Here's a basket star and you can see why that's uh, called a basket star. There's another basket star with its arms unfolded. And here's one with the arms folded up. Okay, so you probably notice that they have a central disc and then arms and the central disc is very distinctly separated from the arms. They have no ambulacral grooves like we saw in asteroidians. They do have a water vascular system as all the echinodermis do. Uh, they have two feet but they don't walk with those two feet. They mostly collect food with them. And no anus. They have a two-way gut. Here is one of the local um, sea stars that you're probably going to see. A model brittle star, Opionarius fasciata. Here's the Ord sand star, Opioteris antipodum. And this is probably the most common, the local snake star, Pectinura maculata. And you can see the very distinct central disc, which is different from the asteroids, where um, there's no clear distinction between the central disc and the arms. Uh, the arms are divided into segmented sections. So you'll see segments, and they have a big inter intervertebral muscle so it runs a muscle that runs the length of the arm and uh, you'll notice when these you see these things move that they shove themselves along with the arms rather than using the two feet and having that gliding motion of the asteroidians so each section of the arm has four ossicles called shields and one pair of podia let's have a look Looking at the arm structure, you can see the little segments one and then two and three. And each of these have they have the spines on each of the segments on laterally on each side. Um, okay, so let's incorporate all that stuff that we were talking about, and hopefully, this will uh, make it practical. All right, so. Here's a brittle star arm. It's got segments like so. All right. Sorry about the painful drawing with my drawing with a mouse. But anyway, so this is the length of the arm. One, two, three, four segments. Now each of those segments, as we said, has four shields. The shields are essentially ossicles. Okay, but we call them shields on the uh, starfish arm. And two of them are going to be called lateral shields. Lateral means to the side. And so those two are the lateral shields. The This is a cross-sectional view, like so cutting this way across the arm. Now there's also an aboral shield. And you can see that at this point where they join, it's going to either, it's going to overlap the lateral shield. Now, in other cases, the lateral shield may overlap the aboral shield. There's also an oral shield, okay, oral being on the side of the mouth. And here's the substrate, let's call that the ground. And so the oral shield is the one that faces down in the same direction as the mouth. The mouth faces towards the substrate, just like in a in an asteroidian sea star, just like we have looked at in the last video. There is next a two foot coming out between the oral shield and the lateral shield. And so these two feet, you'll notice 
don't have suckers, but they have, um, they're sort of club shaped at the end. Okay, so this part right here is like club shape. So they're not, and that's because they're not used for gripping a hold of the substrate. They're used for more for gathering food, but not uh, gripping a hold of it. Okay, on the lateral shields, they're usually spines. Some number of spines. Could be two, could be five, could be uh, more. Okay, but the spines come off of the lateral shields. So here's a little more um, uh, nicely drawn one. And you can see here, we'll trace the outside of the lateral shield with the spines coming off, four spines coming off. And you'll see the two lateral shields on both sides. Then it's got the, um, the two podium or two feet sticking out oral shield right here, ab oral shield up here at the top, and then um, you'll notice these four big muscles, okay, and those big muscles run the length of the arm. Those are the ones that we talked about being uh, for movement. Here's the uh, quite beautiful underside of a uh, brittle star. And it shows a lot of the features that we've been talking about. You can see the different, the spines on the lateral shield, lots of spines. And you can see how the, the segmented nature of the arm here. You can see one segment after another and how they repeat. Uh, it shows where the madreporite would be located, which is on one of these oral shields. Okay, oral shields are uh, big ossicles. It shows the central area, this opening into the, the gut from the mouth, and that means that it has a two-way gut. It's, this is the one opening, so it's a two-way gut that can pack itself up with food, digest it, and then spit it all out. What else does it show? It shows these um, little slit openings right here, okay? And these are known as bursa. So, they don't have the papula that we saw in, in asteroidians. These ones uh, breathe by ventilating uh, oxygenated water into and out of these um, openings, these bursa, and then they have a circulatory system that runs down the arm. Okay, they, could, they can be carnivores or scavengers, which they usually are, uh, or deposit feeders. And then the, that's the, the brittle stars. The basket stars are probably gonna be filter feeders. I mean, almost indefinitely are gonna be uh, filter feeders. So they often hide underneath the rocks and the like. And you'll see these uh, in the fast current areas along the, the entrance. You'll, they'll be hiding underneath the rock. You can turn the rock over and you'll find three or four of these things sitting underneath the rock. And they just stick their arms out and pick up if they're, say, they're deposit feeding. And they'll, they'll use the podia, the two feet, to collect material on the, um, that is settled on that substrate. But they can keep their body hidden under cover under a rock or something like that. Here's a basket star, and you'll see what they do with their two feet, which is they sling mucus between the two feet, and when particles are stuck to it, they take this mucus ball and pass it down the length of the arm to the mouth. Uh, here we talk. We have the bursa, which were what we were talking about before, um, and these have a ciliary reaction that generates a water current and. Uh, brings in oxygenated water. So here is a bursa, okay, and here are those bursal slits that we saw in and out, uh, where water goes in and out on the previous slide. And so they have cilia that just um, 
that bring a water current in and out and so the oxygenated water is taken by the circulatory system back down and back the length of the arm. Here are the jaws. They've got five jaws that come together and can crunch up the, uh, the food and then the stomach which we have seen before is the one-way stomach or sorry the two-way stomach where food goes in one mouth and back out after digestion and here we see it again the bursa jaws one two three four five that come together and crunch things from five different directions okay they may um, broadcast sperm and then they will sometimes brood those within the bursa so they'll hold on to their eggs until they're ready to hatch uh, they're usually dioecious and they um, can reproduce either sexually or asexually, Sexu asexually by fission, as we saw before, good at regeneration.